Hi everybody, welcome to All Games New and Old. I am David Rodriguez, and today I'm going to be unboxing Gloomhaven, the big, big, huge game that uh, started it all. Now, as I record this, there are people who are just getting Frosthaven into their hands, which is the sequel to this game. So, you might be wondering, why unbox this now? Well, uh, a few reasons. One, I mean, the channel's not called All Games Only New, so uh, I do some games that are a little bit older. Also, I got this, I don't know, several months ago, and it was sitting on my shelf because I always heard that you need to get like a good like organizer to really um, handle this game well, and I had to get one. And then I got one, and I realized it was going to take some time to put it together, and uh, I didn't have the time, so it has been sitting there, both of them on my shelf. But you may or may not be able to tell in my voice, I am a little sick. I got some nasty thing that's been going around that all my kids had first. And uh, if, if my voice dies out, by the way, partway through this, I apologize. I'm doing the best I can. I could have tried this out with a smaller game, but I'm not doing that. I'm trying with a big one. But I spent a lot of the day in bed, and so that was a perfect time to build the folded space organizer I got for Gloomhaven and also for Madara. I'll show you a little piece of one of those. Um, I'm not doing a full review on this product, but uh, it's like this kind of thick, uh, very like almost like a really stiff, firm foam that has like a layer of uh, some kind of a sheet on the um, surfaces of it. And you just kind of put it together with regular Elmo's glue. Now, uh, I can't review this, obviously. I, I haven't put them in there yet, but it did go together pretty well. I think the website says that you could put them together in 20 minutes. Uh, I didn't find that to be true, but uh, that might, that, that's going to vary depending on the game, I'm sure. But you know, if this does the trick, it might well be worth the time to do it. So um, I'm going to put that aside for now because I have no idea how this goes in all the compo components. I don't even know what all the components are. I've played uh, Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion, which my wife and I really like a lot. And um, so I, I imagine some of the stuff will look familiar to me, but there may be things that aren't. Uh, for those wondering, I know there's stuff in here that you're not supposed to open until a certain time because uh, it, it's part of the, uh, the storyline of the campaign. And I'm not going to open those on this. I'm not going to spoil anything because I don't want it spoiled for me. And if you're watching this and you haven't bought and played this yet, you probably don't want it spoiled for you either. So anything that's in a, a, a tuck box, I'm going to leave as is. So as much as I'd like to look at all the different characters and all that, I probably won't do that. But um, this will give you an idea for what is in this box and how it's already organized. And you can see if you too will want to have an organizer, but seriously, almost everyone has told me that uh, that it's a good idea. I'm going to show you this side of this box here real quick. Just uh, six, it's one to four players, 30 minutes per player, ages 14 and up, and then these are all awards. This game of it is at the top ranked game on BGG right now. It's It's got to be like in the top three for sure. It's uh, just loved by just about everybody. Of course, there are people who will not like it, but that's, you know, whatever. Um, let me flip this all the way over here. We'll read the back, see what it says. All right, it says, Welcome to Gloomhaven. Being a mercenary on the edge of civilization is anything but easy. For those stupid or brave enough to leave the relative safety of Gloomhaven's walls, adventure, wealth, and fame await in wild and shadowy forests, snowy mountain caves, and long-forgotten crypts. Just don't expect anyone to pay for your services up front, because no one expects you to come back alive. Gloomhaven is a cooperative game of tactical combat in a unique, evolving fantasy world. Each player will assume the role of a hardened mercenary with their own personal motives. Together, players will fight through a campaign of scenarios that reacts and changes based on the player's actions, creating a unique game state full of discovered treasure, retired adventurers, and permanent choices. Each scenario offers players deep tactical decisions where ability cards have multiple uses and using the right ability at the right time can mean the difference between success and failure. Gloomhaven offers streamlined tactical combat without dice against fully automated enemies, each with their own unique behavior patterns. In this box, players will find a fully realized fantasy campaign experience of unparalleled scope and depth. So, there you have it. That's what the back of the box says. Um, you know, like I mentioned, my wife and I have played the Jaws of the Lion, and uh, after playing that, we definitely wanted to play the big one. That, by the way, if you haven't picked that up, is a really great way to learn this game, because it doesn't throw all the complexity at you at once. It really adds things little by little as you go through scenarios, so eventually you're playing basically the, the full rules of the game. It also has a little different uh, kind of setup, an easier setup, because instead of having like the tiles that we're going to see in this box, everything is just in this uh, spiral-bound book, all the maps that you play on and whatnot are in there. So it's a little different, but, um, you know, the same basic game when you get right down to it. So I'm excited to take a look at this. Oh boy, I've been intimidated by this one, honestly. Like, not, not so much that I can learn how to play it, it as more just like figuring out how I was going to 
deal with putting it away, and I figure the uh, sorting is going to take a while, even with an organizer. But uh, you know what? This is one that my, my, my wife and I really both want to get to the table, so we're going to do that. Uh, I just use the Exacto on this because it doesn't have like the um, the plastic wrap; it just has like the stickers on the side. So uh, I think that'll be fine. I flip it back over. Oh God, the art on this game is really cool too. I gotta say, I really like it. You know, one thing I've heard uh, two very different opinions about is the storyline on here. Uh, some people have said that they really like it, and some people say like it's not very important. So. Hard to say if that just depends on personal choice in games or what have you, but I'm curious what I think. You know, I for me, theme is very important, and obviously having a, a story could really add to that. But that being said, I don't feel like uh, the game necessarily has to be like super heavy with the story, although I like that a lot. Uh, as long as it's got enough to kind of give me a picture of what's going on, that could be fine because, you know, my, my brain will fill in the blanks. This is taking a while to open. It is a very deep heavy box. It is moving. I don't know if you can tell how much closer it's getting to the uh, the camera here, but I am I'm struggling a bit, which I am not shocked by. But we should be getting close here. <laughs> Some games are hard to open. It's going to get real close. There we go. Whew. Okay, that was my workout for the day. Um, I'm still really not feeling great, to be honest with you. So um, I really apologize if I sound out of breath or anything. I, I, I feel all right. Um, but just not, not good. So bear with me. All right. So here's something that says town records. So that is sealed. So, uh, I'm not going to open that right now. Uh, I'll wait until the instructions tell me I should, but it's got a town records book. Here is a rule book. It also has a QR code you could scan to watch a video explanation of the rules, which is great. I probably will do that because, um, it's been a while since we played Jaws of the Lion and I could definitely use a refresher. Uh, it never hurts when you come back to a game this in depth to really just, uh, you know, refresh your memory. So the rulebook itself is... Let's go on to the back, because the back is all referenced. So it's it's 51 pages. Uh, definitely not a light game by any stretch. There's a lot of cool pictures. Honestly, I don't think this is going to be that hard to pick up having played Jaws of the Lion. There might be some differences, and I know there's some stuff with the campaign that you don't get in the Jaws, in Jaws of the Lion. Like, for instance, in this, your, um, your heroes can eventually retire. I don't know if they have to, or that's something you choose. I don't really know how that works. But, uh, and then you pick a new hero to continue on with, which is really interesting. And the first, uh, the Jaws of the Lion does not have that, I don't believe. It only has four characters in the box, so I imagine it does not. But if it does, we haven't gotten far enough in to see that. Okay, there's official audio narration for Gloomhaven through Foreteller. I may spring for that, because I hate reading this stuff out loud. I, just, I like reading, I just don't like reading out loud. So I may have to spring for that. I'm glad that that exists for this. Okay. Here, oh boy. Okay, so this is probably going to be our scenario booklet. It doesn't really say, but I imagine that's what it is because it has all these different layouts of tiles. I don't want to, I'm not going to dwell on anything too long here because I don't want to, um, you know, blow into things. But you can see all the different layouts of the map tiles, which will tell you where to put everything to start it all out, which is great. Okay, here we have an actual board. I'm going to move the big box to the side because I think it'll be a little easier to see things because there is a lot in here. So, um, at least with the board, uh, it's so large that uh, I don't want to have that in the way. So I may move it back in a minute, but... Okay, so here, I'm guessing, is sort of like a, a world map of the area that you're in. Here's Gloomhaven, the city up here, and it just goes all over the place. And I know, uh, and I'll show you here in a second, as you go, I believe you're putting stickers on this board. And I'm debating right now, because I know they came out with a pack of stickers that you could use that would uh, peel off easier to reset it if you'd like to, and I'm debating whether or not I should get that. I don't know. Have any of you got it? What do you think? Do you think it's necessary? I don't know how realistic it is that I'm going to go through this more than once. I might, but I'm just not sure. So, uh, okay, so there's all the stickers of different things. You'll be placing down as you find them. Global achievement stickers. That's interesting. End of the Invasion, Edge of Darkness, Artifact Cleanse. I'm just reading a few random ones. City Rule, Militaristic, The Voice Freed. That's interesting. I don't think I heard about this. Okay, so there's going to be a lot of... Um, oh, man. There's a big, thick stack of cardboard in here, so this is going to be... It's all the tiles. I mean, this I'm not surprised. I also have some various tokens here. Let me flip this around, because it looks like everything is... Um, I, I'm having it the wrong side up here. All right, so you can see the tiles. They look really great. Lots of cool detail on them. 
Uh, they really like this kind of like goldish brown scheme. I think it's going to be a lot of that. But there's some monsters here as well. Um, I'm not sure what they are by name just yet, but really neat looking. These look like an ice guys. These are, I don't know, they've got like lobster claw things. Something over here too that's sort of like uh, maybe a ghosty kind of creature. People who really know this game are like, how dare you not know? And some of these were probably even in the Jaws of the Lion, and I'm just not remembering. Very possible, uh, very likely. And uh, you know what? That's just how it's going to be. I don't remember things sometimes. It's just That's just life. People are going to have to deal with that. Um, here's a couple more monsters here. Those look really cool. All right. <clears throat> Let's see here. I think everything looks fantastic. This looks more like a wooded or you know a nature area because it's got like the the dirt floor. It's got grass and stuff growing around it. it makes sense. Okay, here. That's more stands. See now these stands are facing the other way. There's just no way to win. Oh gosh, I'm poking these out on accident. Uh, let me get this up here. You can see some of these cool standees. So all the monsters are standees. Um, I don't know if there's hero standees or not because there are hero miniatures. So they may not do that unless I don't know if people just prefer to have everything be standee. And I believe they're coming out with, or did come out with, um, Gloomhaven models, so you could have figures instead of standees if you wanted to, which, that's really tempting, but also probably a lot more money, I'm guessing, than I really need to spend on anything. Um, so, we'll see, though. I honestly can't remember if those came out already on Kickstarter or, or whatever they would come out on or not. I, um... If they did, I probably was immediately like, yeah, I'm not going to be doing that. Uh, so, <laughs> not because it's not, again, it, I would love to. It's just a matter of, like, how realistic is that for me. So, I'm mainly trying to focus here on the monsters. If I see something really cool on the tiles, I'll show them. But you get the idea, I think, from that zoomed out view. All right, there's some more interesting creatures on this one. Um, it's a cool uh, dragon there. That was really neat. Headless horse would look, I don't know if he's actually headless, but it kind of looks like it. Um, lots more interesting Creatures here. We've got this board. I can't remember if they would call it an elemental board or mana board. I can't recall that anyway. There's that over there. Alright, let's get over here. I think I recognize these worm guys from Jaws of the Lion. I could be wrong. I, maybe it's something similar, or maybe I'm making it up. I'm not sure. But I think some of these are, um, you know, are repeat creatures, which is totally fine. You expect in one world you'd see a bunch of them. I'm curious in, um, in Frosthaven if there's a bunch of, if it's almost all totally different creatures or maybe different versions of the same creatures, like ones that are more inclined to live in an icy place. I don't know. I would have really liked to get Frosthaven, but since I hadn't even started this game, uh, I just felt like it was not good timing for me and kind of a bummer because I know for retail it's going to be quite a lot more than it was on Kickstarter. I don't know if um, if it comes to Kickstarter again like Gloomhaven did. I wonder if it'll still be the original Kickstarter price or if it's just going to have to go up because of the cost of everything these days. I don't know the answer to that. But we'll see. I, I think um, I, I could be very happy just having this for a long time, I imagine, because I, I think there's, there's so much in this box that um, I don't think I'm going to need Frosthaven anytime soon. I'd be lying if I said I didn't want it. I keep seeing people uh, get it and be all happy, and I'm a little jealous, I have to admit. Just because, look, I mean, it doesn't make sense. There's sometimes things I just want to have, even if I'm not going to play them right away. Uh, it doesn't make sense. There's some cool, like, I'm not even sure what these are. They're like coffins or something? I don't know, but uh, it looks interesting. Yeah, that's something that I just want to have in my possession, even if I'm not going to play them immediately. Obviously, the plan is always to play them at some point. There's like a big bear or something there. That's cool. So, pretty neat. Okay. Now we're getting into some stuff here. So we're not going to open anything that is sealed. I remember in um, Jaws of the Lion, like these are, these are some cards that you put into your deck, and as you went on, you kind of unlocked new packs that had like more skills. I don't know if this is going to work the same way or not, but it kind of seems like it. I actually thought maybe that was just a Jaws of the Lion thing. I thought maybe this would start off with just all your regular cards, whatever they are, but um, that may not be true. Oh, God. Okay. I just saw something. Uh, interesting. This looks like a, a runic translator, which is fascinating. Seems all right, although honestly, I'd rather them just spell stuff out, to be honest, but that's fine. Whatever. It's cool. The reason why I was gave that kind of like uh-oh sign 
was that um, these are little stickers. I hope they're called enhancement stickers. So my hope is that these are things that you add as you go, rather than during setup having to stick up, sticker up a bunch of stuff. Because, oh lordy, that would be painful. I really hope that's not the case. All right, so we have your party sheet here. Um, which has name, location, notes, and achievements, as well as reputation. So that's kind of interesting to keep track of things for the campaign. All right, we've got all your little health trackers and whatnot here. I like that they're all put together for you. I always hate snapping those things together because there's always like one or two that are just like a pain in the tush and they don't go together like you'd want them to. I like this foam stuff. I'm gonna end up getting rid of it, I'm pretty sure, but I do like it. Okay. Okay, so there's a player reference card there. I really don't know if I should open these card packs or not. Uh, I'm afraid I'm gonna blow something that I shouldn't. But as you can see, there's, there's several decks of them in here. I don't know what all this is, because some of this is not... Stuff that's for when you're on the road. Looks like there'll be like events that happen to you. Oh my goodness. Okay. Here's, um, I can't remember that what they call these, but these cards are ones that you'll play when you're in combat that will um, give you a bonus or a negative or just uh, do nothing like that. So there is uh, some randomness, randomness to, the, uh, to the combat in the game, but not a real high degree, which is kind of nice. So got a little thing of... Items. I'm not going to go through all these cards. There's so many, and I don't honestly know what is and isn't a spoiler, so I don't want to do that and, you know, mess anything up. Regardless, I think you you probably understand you're going to have, like, magic boots and armor and all this other stuff, and, you know, that's just how it is. There's more of those cards that he's in combat, which is great. Uh, I don't know what this is. Looks interesting, but I'm not sure. That has a magnet pit. Again, this might be something that you um, you can have spoiled, so I'm not going to go into it. It does have a little symbol. Of a, it looks like a card tearing. So I don't know if you destroy cards of this. I don't think I'd heard that somehow. Or at least I don't remember. Okay, I don't know about that. Okay, so these are little standees for your monsters that you're going to fight. I believe, if I remember right, the white ones are the kind of minion monsters, and the yellow ones are the kind of boss versions of them. I could have that reversed, but uh, if I recall right, that's what it is. Here's your little... Um, Elemental tracker things. They feel like wood, which is nice. They're not just cardboard. Very cool. Uh, more cards. I don't know if I looked at this. Okay. So this is going to have some of the attacks of the bad guys. So this one has our initiative, 64. Um, another moon at minus one, and their attack at plus one. So if they did that card, they'd move a little slower, but they would attack uh, for more damage. Then there's a bunch of them depending on the monster. So this one on the top here is Stone Golem, but all the creatures have their own things. All right, here is, uh, there's gonna be at least one of these for each monster, and this is gonna be how you keep track of uh, their health and whatnot. So uh, this, these are uh, obviously very important. Something else down here, a couple things that I don't think I'm supposed to open. So, oh, oh no, I'm wrong, okay. So these, those things I just showed you, I forgot, slide in here so that that way you could see which version you're facing because I think they could kind of turn and, and sort of uh, level up. I don't remember if it's by number of players or if it's just depending on the difficulty scenario. I don't recall, but um, anyway, that's what those are. I thought, I thought that looked all secretive. Okay, so now there's all these that I'm not going to open. Uh, I'll, I'll pull one out. I'm guessing this might be like a scenario kind of situation. Not totally sure about that, but I think it could be. I um, mean, yeah, it's got the symbols on on it everywhere, basically, to kind of let you know that it belongs to a certain grouping of things. And you can see there's quite a few. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 17. So, um, <clears throat> I don't know if those are scenarios or what, but they're, um, you know, they're, they're supposed to be secretive. And then over here, you see all these little boxes here. I'll pull out one of them. Uh, again, not gonna... Oh, that's the same symbol as I grabbed before. Uh, so maybe this is the box for your character. You keep that in. That, that's what it is. Okay, sorry. It's been a bit. Bear with me, but... I really wish I felt like I could open these up. In here is a model of the character that is represented by this symbol. And I really want to look at them, but I think some of them you're not supposed to open until you get to that point, and I don't know 
which ones, uh, like, if, if I knew which ones for sure you start with, I would just go ahead and open the starting ones. I don't know if you can start with literally any of them, or if some just don't show up till later, so I don't want to blow any of that. If you're really curious about the models, I'm sure there are pictures online, but I don't want to be the one to spoil anything for anyone, so, uh, apologize if you really wanted me to open those up, but I just don't think it's a good idea, um, I don't want to mess up anybody's thing, so... Anyway, that, holy god, that is the monstrous beast of a game. I'm not even going to put this all the way on, because I'm going to try to sort this real soon. But that's Gloomhaven, the original, big beast, and as huge as this box is, I've seen it next to the Frosthaven box, and the Frosthaven box is gigantic compared to this. I don't think it's twice as deep, but it looks like, I want to say maybe like, it's like one and a half times as deep, I'm not sure, but... Dang, that's got to be a huge game. Someday I will uh, do a uh, an opening of that. I'm certain it'll happen at some point. Probably about the time, I don't know, Happy Haven or whatever else is going to happen uh, comes out, and then I'll be doing Frost Haven. We'll see. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please hit like and subscribe and click the little bell icon so you can know about the next time I put out a video. Otherwise, I'll look forward to seeing you all around the table again at All Games New and Old. Bye. Hi everyone, we now have a merch store, so please help support our channel and check it out. Yeah, these games are, are very expensive as you know. We also love to upgrade our equipment one day so we can get uh, you know better quality video to you. And sadly that all just takes a bunch of money, but this is a great way you can help us. We have all kinds of t-shirts in different colors with both the classic All Games New and Old logo and the AGNO For Everyone logo. We also have sweatshirts like the zip up hoodie or the classic hoodie and we have all kinds of items you can have around the house like the water bottle or coffee tumbler we also have pint glasses and mugs and a few other things yeah so go on there there's a lot of different colors for a lot of this stuff so go check it out you know see if anything appeals to you hopefully it does and hopefully you'll help us out we'd really really appreciate it thank you bye If you enjoyed that video, you might also like this one. Or this one. If you like any of our videos, what you should do is click this little button to subscribe so you'll know about the next time we put out a video. We'll see you around the table. Bye. Bye.